Hi guys and welcome to this training session where we're going to have a look at Drayton's range of auto balancing TRVs as well as some tips and best practice advice to help you with commissioning. So let's begin by looking at why it's important for us to have a balanced heating system and here we have a mock-up of a boiler and some radiators and in reality these radiators will be all in different rooms of the property. They're all likely to be different sizes to accommodate the output requirements of the respective rooms and they're all going to have different lengths of pipework feeding them from the flow and return from the boiler. But what that all amounts to is that no two radiators are the same in terms of their resistance to flow. And what you tend to find is that the radiators that are closest to the boiler tend to have less resistance to flow than ones further away. And balancing looks to even this out across the whole of the system. To do this, we need some way of restricting the flow into the radiators. So we fit some valves. Now it doesn't matter whether the radiators are being controlled by manual valves whether there's a lock shield at either end or whether at one of the ends there is a thermostatic radiator valve, ultimately a radiator system needs to be balanced regardless of the method of control for the actual radiator itself. Once the valves are in, we then add some pipe work. So this is our flow. This is the hot water leaving the boiler. And then we've got the return, which is the cooler water, once it's been through the radiator, going back to the boiler. Now you'll hear the term delta T referred to when talking about balancing a heating system and what that means is differential temperature. That is the difference in temperature between the water leaving the boiler on the flow and what is coming back to the boiler on the return. And typically most boiler manufacturers recommend a delta T of 20 degrees for the boiler to run at optimum efficiency. So what we're looking to achieve by balancing a heating system is that as the hot water leaves the boiler and approaches the T for any particular radiator, there's no greater or lesser resistance for the flow to go either through the radiator or to carry on in the flow to fulfill the heating requirements of the other radiators downstream on the circuit. And this way we're ensuring that all of the radiators on the system are getting sufficient amounts of hot water to achieve their heat output. Now here we have a scenario where the system is out of balance and this first radiator it hasn't been balanced so the, the valves are wide open. So as the hot water leaves the boiler and approaches the T, it now finds that the path of least resistance is to go through the radiator and therefore it doesn't allow the, the water to flow on to the rest of the radiators on the system. This causes two main issues. Firstly, other radiators on the system don't receive enough hot water, so they're unable to achieve their heat output and that will result in cold rooms. And this will be a particularly apparent on those radiators furthest away from the boiler or where the hot water has needed to be elevated to higher floors. And secondly, this short circuiting will allow the return temperature to increase much quicker than it would normally. So you've no longer got a delta T of 20. And it's highly likely that the return temperature will rise above 54 degrees, which is dew point, And that will mean that the boiler will no longer be in condensing mode, severely impacting boiler efficiency. So when you're not using an auto balancing TRV to balance a radiator system, there are two main ways of doing it using the lock shield to restrict the flow into the radiator, or if you're using the Drayton TRV body that comes with the RT414 or the TRV4, you can set the balance on the TRV valve body itself. Both of these methods use the differential temperature between the flow and return. So to use the lock shield method, firstly get the heating running and then we are looking at the difference in temperature between the flow and return. And we need this to typically be between 10 and 20 degrees depending on the boiler manufacturer's specification. And the way we get to that is we use the cap on the lock shield to turn the lock shield down until we get that difference. And then once we're there, we swap the caps out from the adjusting cap to the locking cap, pop the screw down and that radiator is then balanced using the lock shield. The second method is to balance using the Drayton EB body and to do that you need one of these which is the Drayton balancing key and the way we balance with these is you use the bigger end, insert it around the top of the valve insert so that it engages into the clamp ring, give it half a turn, now it's important you don't take that clamp ring all the way out otherwise there's nothing holding the insert in but once that is loosened Flip the key over so it fits the other way around and this will then allow you to turn the valve insert 
in a clockwise direction to one of the six valve presets. When using this method, it's important to remember to leave the lock shield wide open, but still lock it off to prevent any future changes. So now let me introduce you to the new auto balancing valve from Drayton and the SKUs, and it's available with a couple of head options, the TRV4 or the RT414. You can also get it as an angled or straight for 15 mil compression. And all of these packs are available with their respective lock shields, so RT414 or TRV4 with either angled or straight lock shield. It's also available as a separate, which is particularly useful for retrofitting or when specifying for wiser. Installation of the auto balancing TRV is much the same as any other TRV installation. And one of the key benefits of the Drayton auto balancing valve is that it is dimensionally the same as our standard EB body and the body that comes with the RT212. So you don't need to change the radiator tail or the distance of the pipework. And while that's being installed, let me talk a little bit about flow direction. So the EB body was bi-directional, so it had the double-headed arrow. Whereas you can see with the new auto balancing valve, it's important that you respect the flow direction arrow. So the flow here has got to come vertically and then divert into the radiator. So you may need to orientate the head either in the horizontal or vertical position in order to accommodate that flow direction. With that installed, we are now ready to commission the system, and we do that using, again, the Drayton balancing key. Now, you'll see there's two differences between these. This is the old one, uh, but with the advent of the auto balancing valve, we've now included the hex on one end, so that now fits onto the top of the valve to allow you to turn it to the appropriate setting. And there are two methods to decide what that setting should be. Firstly, the insert of the box. If you know what the output of the radiator is, you choose the radiator output plus the differential temperature, and you've got three options there, and that will tell you what increment to set the insert to. And the second method is used where you don't know the output of the radiator. So head over to our website, and there is a valve setting calculator whereby you put in the radiator size, the type of radiator, your desired flow temperature, and that will again give you three settings based on three differential temperatures. Now that that's been set to the appropriate flow rate for this radiator, we can install the thermostatic head as we would with any of the TRV bodies. Pop the head on, do the locking ring up, finger tight, and then set it to your desired comfort setting. If you're thinking of fitting wiser for a customer, it's a really good idea to pair it with the new auto balancing valve to really optimize the performance and efficiency of their heating system. When specifying the auto balancing valve, we recommend fitting on all radiators, even if you don't intend on fitting a TRV, as it's important to ensure consistent flow into all radiators on the system. If you need to leave one open for bypass purposes, simply fit a decorator's cap. Just be sure to only screw it down until it just touches the top of the pin. Don't screw it all the way, otherwise you'll restrict flow into the radiator. So the benefits are clear. For you as the installer, you no longer have to spend hours balancing a heating system after a new installation or following any changes, for instance, adding or removing radiators. And from the customer's point of view, they benefit from a system that dynamically balances all of the time irrespective of changes in temperature and pressure within their system, maximizing their efficiency and comfort. Thanks for watching this training video, and if you need any more information or resources, head over to our website, draytoncontrols.co.uk.